So now what we're going to touch on is what I call the building blocks to sexual health or the fundamentals for sexual health. Okay. We're going to touch on sexuality, self-esteem and healthy relationships. So what is sexuality? What is it that we're actually talking about? Sexuality fundamentally is caring about yourself, your body and other people. It's growing and developing a sense of love, closeness, sexual feelings, sexual expression, personal values and relationships. From this information, you can see that sexuality is a central aspect to humanity and the fact that we touched on that cradle to grave phenomenon earlier. It's something that we're experiencing from the moment that we're born until the moment that we pass. So for something that is quite often brushed under the carpet, seen as not serious, seen as a tricky um, conversation, it's actually paramount to a young person's experience because whether they actually end up engaging in sexual behaviour or not, they most certainly will have those sexual thoughts and feelings. So we need to be able to equip ourselves with the information to provide to the young people to make sure that when they're having these thoughts and feelings, they're able to deal with it in a safe and appropriate way. So sexuality is far greater than just a sense of sexual identity. Though I think it is really important and paramount for me now to touch on the fact that sexuality or sexual identity, it's shifting. It's not a fixed measure. Young people have different experiences at different parts in their life, which may mean that their sexual identity changes, grows and develops with them. It's not a fixed entity. So just bear that in mind when you're having conversations with young people around sexual identity, because it is something that's really important. Now let's touch on self-esteem. You may be thinking to yourself, what role does self-esteem have to play when it comes to sex? And the answer is a really big one. Whenever we do programs with young people, sex, the act of sex, the protection, the condom demonstrations and the sexual health screening, they're some of the last things that we talk to young people about. The first things that we talk to them about are self-esteem and healthy relationships. Because I don't believe you can have a positive sexual experience without first having your self-esteem and relationships in check. So why is self-esteem so important? It plays a crucial role in a young person's life. That sense of how they feel about themselves, where they're fitting into the world and what their experiences are. We know through our own experience of working young people and also through the research that those who have a positive sense of self will often make far better choices and they will make more informed choices. They value themselves and they see their own self worth. They know what they're worth and they will strive to get the best for themselves. This is particularly important when it comes to the world of sex and sexuality. If they're making more informed choices and they're making better choices, to us that means that they're going to be staying safer. They're going to be accessing protection, contraception, and seeking out those sexual health services when needed. From having worked with young people for close on 15 years, I really am a firm believer that if we are increasing a young person's self-esteem and resilience, we're decreasing the problem no matter what it is that they're facing, be it a sexual health issue, be it a drug and alcohol issue, or being a mental health issue. And I know that teachers within the school have a really strong um, emphasis around self-esteem and resilience these days because unfortunately, this is what we see lacking in a lot of young people. The resilience to take a step back, but to get back up and fight on, and the self-esteem to believe that they are worthy of the best. Problematic um, with low self-esteem when it comes to young people in the sense that they can't always identify things that they like about themselves. It can be really difficult for young people to feel good about themselves or to talk about themselves in a positive way. Ideally, we should be role modeling this positive self-talk to the young people within our lives. Being a mother of two young boys, I'm even mindful of how I talk about myself and my body and my appearance around my young sons, because I don't want them to grow up having a sense of women should look a particular way, for example. So being mindful of the language again that we're using and trying to role model this positive self-talk around young people really helps. Encourage strengths-based approaches to life. 
really focus on what it is that the young person is good at or things that they do like about themselves and things that they enjoy. We all have things that we're good at. Sometimes it can just take a little bit to find that. And you have a role as an adult within that person's life to encourage that growth and to find what it is. Unfortunately, what we see sometimes is that when young people have low self-esteem, they might put themselves into riskier situations or perform riskier behaviours than they would if they had higher self-esteem. A really good example of that was working with a group of young people, young women in particular, and one of them talking about oral sex and the fact that they'd gone to a party and performed oral sex on several young men at that party. Now, she had done that as a way to increase her self-esteem when she was having oral sex with those young men for the five to 10 minutes, however long that behaviour took. She was the centre of their universe. She got lots of attention because of the acts that she was performing. Unfortunately for that young woman, once that act was completed, she was no longer worthy of those young men's time. So we talk about that sense of self-love as well and that essentially you need to know yourself and you need to love yourself before you can expect somebody else to love you. Know that you are worthy of that time and attention and not just for five to ten minutes but ongoing. Which leads us then into talking about healthy relationships and what does self-esteem have to do with relationships? Quite a lot. So when we talk about relationships with young people, it's really important that we're talking about relationships as connections. We're not just talking about relationships in the romantic sense, although absolutely romantic relationships do occur, but they may identify having a boyfriend, girlfriend or a partner and being physical with that person. If we're looking at relationships in terms of connections, we actually have relationships with lots of different people. We have those relationships with our peers, with our family, with our friends, and quite often for young people entering into the workplace, they also have those connections with their colleagues. What it's really important to do as the adult in that young person's life is to talk to them about the different types of relationships and to talk to them about boundaries or lines in the sand what might be acceptable in one type of relationship, but not in another. Particularly important for those of you who are working with people with a disability, where, for example, they may like to hug and kiss a lot of people as a sign of affection. It might be having those discussions around those circle of safety and saying that it's only appropriate for us to hug and kiss those in that first circle, our immediate family and friends, not just somebody who's walking down the street. So healthy relationships, what is it that we consider healthy? That's things where there's like love, respect, honesty, there's really good communication within the relationship and that those people who are in that relationship are really supporting each other to be the best that they can be. What does unhealthy look like? Unhealthy looks like abuse and we're not just talking physical abuse, but that might also be sexual abuse emotional abuse, financial abuse. There's a whole range of things that come under the header of abuse. Put downs, that name calling, that's the things that are damaging that young person's self-esteem, making them feel a little worthless. Jealousy by a particular partner or controlling situations and potentially isolating their partner. So cutting off previous relationships that they've had with their family or their friends and really controlling who it is that they're talking to and what it is that they're doing. So again, it's really important for us as adults to be role modeling what it looks like to be in a healthy relationship. I think, you know, over the years, I've definitely reflected on some of the friendships that I have and reflected on whether they're healthy or not. Are they actually fulfilling my needs? So even as an adult, I can be demonstrating what it looks like to be in a healthy relationship with peers and colleagues to my children and young people around me. Young people are learning from experience. So we know that um, adolescence is that period of experimentation, learning what it is that they do like and what they don't like. So when they're in these relationships, there is a really good chance that that is a form of experimentation for them. We want them to be able to have those experiences and that self of experimentation because that's going to help them build those boundaries. That's gonna help them to determine what they consider acceptable within a relationship and what they don't consider acceptable. And this is where we particularly ask peers of young people to step in because what we quite often see is that there's a bit of a status around being in a relationship, particularly a romantic relationship and having a partner, either a boyfriend, girlfriend, or sometimes both. 
And if somebody has lower self-esteem, they're more likely to stay in an unhealthy relationship because they'd rather be in a relationship than be single. Somebody with higher self-esteem feels confident to leave that relationship because they're happy with who they are as a person. They identify that they don't need to be in a relationship to have a sense of self and to fit in. So we do ask peers to step in and help their friends around this kind of stuff. Sometimes when somebody is in a healthy, um, sorry, an unhealthy relationship, they're too close to the situation. They don't see what other people are seeing outside of that. They've become too close to it. It's sometimes not until that relationship has ended that they see how toxic or unhealthy it actually was. However, all of that is experience. Even if they have been in that unhealthy and toxic relationship, they're going to be learning what it is that they don't want to have in their next relationship. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, we want to be stepping in and making sure that um, a, young people, a young person is not being abused within those relationships. That's probably the most difficult thing for us to deal with as adults or carers. So now that we have some of the fundamentals down, again, if there's any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat box. We will have some time at the end to go over the questions and you can unmute yourself towards the end to ask questions as well. So if you've got anything that you're thinking, please jot them in the chat box and we will be able to address those. 